Hey, 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 hey. Once again, it's on Consciousness Creators. If you are in the building, please give me some feedback. Welcome to the Consciousness Creator Summit. We are going to get started very shortly. Feel free to share this out. I see a couple of hearts already, some people jumping on. We are going to get started very shortly. Sorry for uh, the confusion this morning. Had some definite uh, things to take care of. Glad I could be here with you this afternoon or this evening or this morning, wherever you are. Welcome to the Consciousness Creators Summit. My name is Tony Doyle, and we will be getting started very shortly. Uh, if you would, please share this out to all your connections, whether on your page or all your groups who accept that. Say hi after you've done so. I see Cindy's in the building. Andy, if you guys could share out, I would appreciate that. Um, we're on at an odd time. Um, so I'm going to need all your help to share out. Uh, I don't think we have Ali and Paul on board with us at 3 a.m. where they're at in uh, Ireland. So probably uh, probably a few people shy tonight, but they can catch the replay. Once again, this is the Consciousness Creators Summit. My name is Tony Doyle, and we're just going to take a few minutes to go ahead and share out. So if you would do that, I would certainly appreciate it. And then uh, let me know who's in the building. I see Jenny's here. Um, looks like uh, Narelle's here. Appreciate you guys. Jay Stevenson is in the building. Hi, Jason. We're just sharing out real quick. Just getting started here, guys. Um, sharing out to all of our connections. So if you will do the same, I would appreciate that. Hi, Jill Young Love. Glad you could join us tonight. Go ahead and share out, guys. Welcome to the Consciousness Creators Summit. We are obviously on week two now. And so glad to have all you guys along with us. I'm going to share out to a few more places and we'll get started. Hey, 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 Johnny. What's going on? Sharing out. Kathleen's in the building. Hi, Kathleen. If you could share out, please, I would appreciate it. I am doing the same. All right. After you share that, guys, feel free to type in the chat box there. Let me know where you're joining us from tonight, or this morning, or this afternoon. <clears throat> I do expect we'll be a little bit light just because of the weird timing of the live tonight. But that's okay. That's why we have replays, right? Um, I don't have a frozen screen, Jill. I'm not sure. Anybody else having trouble with the frozen screen? <clears throat> Johnny. Johnny's in Augusta, Georgia. Right on. That's the uh, southern part of the United States. Great to have you on board. If you could share out, Johnny, uh, either on your personal page and or any groups you might be a part of, I appreciate it. Cindy's in Kansas City. Love Kansas City. My record label is in Kansas City. For those of you who don't know, uh, Deb's screen is fine. So, Jill, you may have to restart um, if, you've, if you're still frozen there. My record label is in Kansas City. Just getting back to that. I'm actually... Um, I work with Strange Music uh, out of Kansas City, which is uh, owned by a rapper named Tech 9 And... Um, I've been there almost 10 years, um, been in the music industry over 20 years total with, uh, well, that I've had a record deal, that is, been doing music since I was probably two. Jefferson City, Missouri, Jenny Sims is in the building, Deb's here from Rhode Island, hey Deb, all right, we're just sharing out guys, we're going to get started very shortly. So if you could share out and then uh, do what these guys are doing and go ahead and type where you're joining us from. We're going to get started shortly. We've got some good stuff for you today and I'm going to kind of update you on what happened this morning. Well, this morning for me, but uh, 12 hours ago when I was planned to go live. 
had uh, had some issues there and wasn't able to. So we'll talk about that, and that actually influenced what we're going to be talking about today. <clears throat> All right, I'm sharing out a couple more things. We uh, we don't have Ali. Um, Thanks, Jason. Appreciate that. NSW Australia in the building. That's the good thing about about doing the live at this time of night. We get to have Jason on with us. Hopefully, maybe we'll have Sheb jump on here too if she realizes the time. Um, like I said, I don't think we'll have Ali or Paul or... Uh, Several others who may be like 3 a.m. ish. Joel, those in Ireland, I uh, I think you're gonna have some trouble there. Scott Leosi's in the building. That must mean Tappan Girl's uh, not far behind there. Haven't seen her pop up yet, but I'm sure she's gonna be jumping on. So, all right, we're just sharing, um, and we're gonna get started here very shortly. So. Like I said, I do expect it will be a little light in the numbers for the live this evening, but everybody can catch up on the replay. All right. So happy to have Jason here live. Right on. Guys, I don't know about you, but it was an incredible week of lives on the Consciousness Creators for the past seven days. If I can see some hearts and some... Uh, some thumbs ups or some somethings for all of everybody. Like it was an amazing day every single day. I love that. It was great. You guys appreciate it as well. I see a lot of hearts coming up. That's awesome. Yeah, it was, it was really great. I'm, I'm glad to be kicking off week two here. <laughs> Missy Jean. Deb, hey, there's Jen. Hi, where are you guys joining from? Feel free to type in there. We're just getting started. We've uh, so far we've done a whole sharing out to some people and some groups. So do the same. Yeah, Cindy, amazing. It's been really, really good. It's uh, it, you guys don't know, but we have a little private behind the scenes group of all the consciousness creators um all the facilitators and like we're overwhelmed our own selves uh like every every day is just like wow it's such a great feeling to be a part of that and you guys are a huge part of that as well um we had high hopes of getting a thousand people on uh into a group so we could do some some group vibration and we're close to 1500 now which is amazing. So give yourself some hearts for that. Certainly appreciate all of you guys here. We are going to go ahead and get started. I've shared to all my contacts. I hope you have as well. Feel free to keep sharing this. And if you're joining in on the replay, I would really appreciate you if you would share on the replay as well. Miss Eugene is in Lawrence, Kansas. Lawrence is also close to my record label. Yes, absolutely, Jason. It's every every single day has been wonderful. It's been really uplifting and beautiful time. Appreciate all all of my other co-creators, including the fifteen hundred of you all, who have been absolutely awesome. All right. I think we'll go ahead and get started. I've shared out to mine. Like I said, if you'll continue sharing, I'd appreciate that. I would like to officially welcome you to week two of the Consciousness Creators Summit. I am Tony Doyle. Uh, for those of you who may not know me, I think most of you probably do, but we have once again had a lot of new members. Uh, we are up to nearly 1,500 now. Um, like I said, my name is Tony. Um, I am a transformational mindset coach. Um, I also do a lot of mentoring and I work with Mind Valley and Hay House and TEDx and um, I'm a musician and which I've 
been signed to a label for about 20 years now and do a lot of different things. So I, I certainly appreciate Allie who invited me to be a part of this. And um, I do want to explain about what happened earlier. About 12 hours ago, I was planning on going live right here on Consciousness um, Creators. And uh, unfortunately, one of my other jobs, my other hats, which the office I'm still in right now, 12 hours later, um, I work with youth, um, which is a great thing. I think you'll all agree. I, I love working with youth. Um, however, in my capacity uh, as a mentor and an advocate, lots of times um, some things happen and maybe not the most positive thing. So my job is to take my spiritual base, my ability to keep calm in a rough situation and try to transfer that. And that's exactly what I was doing this morning. Um, it started about 5.30 in the morning and that particular episode lasted uh, a good four and a half hours until we got that calmed down. So anyway... Um, went through the school day and I'm here with you and I'm happy to be here with you. Just wanted to explain that. So I apologize those of you who were hoping to tune in um, 12 hours ago to me. That's what I was doing. I was kind of, I had my, uh, my other hat on and I was working with some kids. But I would like to say that that has actually affected me because at the last second I decided to completely change what I was going to talk about tonight. Um, and kind of address more of that. Um, I touched on it a little bit on my first live back on the first, but I wanted to talk a little bit more about, um, anger control strategies specifically. We had a lot of questions actually on the lives throughout the week about different things. Um, as all of our facilitators are, are great advocates for mindfulness um, and those types of things. So I wanted to address some of those things, um, if that's okay. Um, like I said, there were a lot of questions about how we can use this for our own um, benefit. Because obviously, we live on planet Earth. So therefore, we deal with other people. Um, and sometimes those people can be triggered. And sometimes those people trigger us as well. Um, obviously anger is a low vibration, okay, but everything is relative, okay? There's a universal law called the universal law of relativity. Einstein did a little work on that. You may have heard of it, um, but that basically says that everything is relative to one another. So if you are in depression, anger is a step up on the emotional scale, right? So if you're Abraham Hicks fans, you'll know it's always about reaching for the next best feeling, right? So, and if you remember my life from last time, we were talking about that. Thoughts become things, but what does it take? You have thought goes to a feeling that's still inside your head. You add the energy of the heart and that becomes an emotion and energy in motion. Am I right? You guys remember that? Give me some hearts if you remember. Emotion is energy in motion. We are all energy. Energy is everything. And indeed, thoughts become things, including we can very easily manifest some ugly situations in our lives. Okay? Um, realizing that everything we do is a mirror. Okay? So, in some sort of way, what we see is something that we're contributing to. A lot of people do not want to hear that, but it's true. I'm sorry to tell you. <laughs> so that's what mindfulness and awareness is all about. Okay. And we've had some great, great uh, mindfulness and awareness this whole last week. I know Jason did a bunch on it. Vivian did a bunch on it. Uh, tapping. Ali talked about it. Lou talked about it. Literally. Shub talked about it. So every single consciousness creator has touched on mindfulness and awareness, okay? And how we can use that to our advantage, okay? 
So, and that's really what it's about when we're talking about being a conscious creator, right? A deliberate creator, as Abraham Hicks would say. All right. So that's deliberately using the laws to our advantage as we live here on planet Earth. OK, so. Um, so I did want to talk a little about that. So I have um, some strategies here. Like I said, I for what I do uh, with youth, I am an anger management specialist. I work with all kind of kids with anger issues from age two up to about 18. And um, in that role, I see a lot of stuff. I also work with some kids that's, that have possibly um, some sort of mental health diagnosis and the stigma attached to that on top of everything um, and uh, autistic kids, things like that. So any, any kid that's got a challenge in our school corporation, uh, myself and the team that I work with here, that's what we do. So we go in and we work with those things. So I did want to give you some anger management strategies. Uh, once again, this touched close to home once again today as there was uh, a pretty ugly incident that, that I had to deal with. And, and it um, kind of reminded me that you guys had asked some questions over the week about how can we use this mindfulness in our own life. And uh, I figured this would be a great time to implement that. So um, so the very first thing I want to touch on is non-attachment. And you may think that sounds funny when we're talking about anger management, but literally, <laughs> I was reading your comments there, right. So, but literally think about, think about the ego and what it wants to do, right? We talked about that all week, the difference between uh, our higher self and our human self, some people call that 3D, 5D, um, you know, cerebral cortex versus, you know, uh, there, you can call it pretty much, you know, you can call it a lot of things. But basically, the idea is um, to not attach yourself to outcomes. Okay. Um, the ego always wants to be right. It's its job. Okay. Uh, the job of the ego is to save us. Um, so luckily for us, there's not a lot of lions out uh, running in the bush. So um, we don't require the same uh, amount of ego that we may have once as far as for saving our life. Unfortunately, it still likes to run things. And if we are not conscious and aware it will run that paradigm that we were talking about over the last week, okay? Our, our subconscious is programs. Um, there's a lot of good evidence that between age zero and seven, um, most of our repetitive natures, okay, the programs that we run, the paradigms, the belief systems, most of those will be picked up from parents, from environment, um, from things people say, from teachers, from schoolyard bullies, okay? Zero to seven, that's a small window um, of programming. And the thing is, there are lots of people who use that same programming for their whole life, okay? They never become conscious creators. They don't become aware. And the problem with that is we run a comfortable pattern over and over and over, which may not serve us anymore, Give me some hearts if you guys think uh, can think of one thing that you do just out of habit that may not be serving you. Or maybe you've upgraded here in 2019. Let me know. Have you upgraded something? Have you stepped out of your comfort zone and you're consciously creating something in your life, something better? Could be with jobs. Could be with relationships. Your money story. Have you changed your money story? Okay. So our job as consciousness creators, we do want to raise the vibration. We want to raise consciousness and help you do so as well. The beautiful thing is this group has nearly 1,500 people. If we can raise our vibration and project that love out, we have the opportunity to affect millions. Not even playing. Millions. There are uh, lots of studies that have been done 
about the effect of the vibration of love, which is uh, 500 on the vibration scale. So 500 and above can affect millions of people when you have it in a group like this, okay? The Maharaji effect. I know Sheb talked about some of this in her life. Beautiful stuff. So we want to do that, and it starts with non-attachment. <clears throat> That's great, Jason. Yes, I don't know if you guys saw Jason's. He's doing all kind of great things over there, as he is uh, known to do. But he has stepped out of his comfort zone, and um, if, uh, if you've seen over on his page, he had a big announcement about some, uh, some new educational opportunities that he's going to be pursuing, which is amazing. Love to do that as well. So beautiful. Um, if you guys don't know about me, I am an education junkie. So I will, <laughs> I will, uh, I love learning about everything, every single thing. Um, especially uh, if it helps me move up. So, so non-attachment was our first um, topic there um, with anger management. Uh, and once again, if we detach from the outcome and we kind of put that ego in check, that's a beautiful way that we can control our own anger, and realize anytime you're approaching something with love, you're affecting a vibration in the room. Anytime. Okay, so I know there was a lot of questions about how can I do that? This person is always negative, blah, blah, you know, and it's true. Okay, we all deal with that. We've got co-workers who hate their jobs. We've got, you know what I mean, people who are stuck in their, uh, in their mindsets and but what we can do is bring love to the situation. Love and understanding and compassion, right? Because we've been there and we probably still are there in some realms. Okay, there's some things that's hard for us to get over our normal paradigms. Okay, so we not attach. Okay, detach. And we're going to bring love to the situation. So with that, remembering, like I said, life is a mirror, Life is a mirror of what we, what we have inside is what we recognize and project on the outside, okay? So the point is don't, think, don't take things personal. Don't, don't take what someone else does personal towards you, realizing that life is actually a mirror. And we're going to do a little mirror work here. And uh, once we get through these basic things, I'm going to give you a couple processes to help with all this. So first point was uh, non-attachment. Second is realize that life is a mirror and therefore don't take things personal, okay? Um, and moving on, so in conjunction with that, if we're not taking it personal, it makes it much easier to let things go, okay? So if you're harboring ill will right now and you backtrack these two steps, you don't take it personal, okay? Whatever somebody did, don't take it personal, don't even look at it like that. That's, a, that's your perspective. Change your perspective on what happened. Show some compassion. You don't know what's going on in your life, and it doesn't really matter. Okay? Your job is you, and you take care of you. Um, and you show that non-attachment. And I promise you, you will be able to raise your own vibration just by letting go. Just by letting go of it. No problem, Stephanie, joining late. Um, we are a little light here. Just to let you guys who just joined know, um, we're a little light because we're 12 hours late on this broadcast. So it affected a lot of our time zones who were planning. But uh, the lovely thing about Facebook is we have plenty of replays available. So if you are just joining, if you would share out, I would definitely appreciate that. And let us know where you're joining from. We are talking about anger management and the role of um, detachment, mindfulness, and awareness um, in being able to deal with day-to-day -day life, okay? Stuff that we all go through. Um, we talked a little bit about the difference between 3D and 5D. Highly controversial. And in the end, who cares, really? You know what I mean? We, we deal with mostly a 3D, 4D reality, which means this is a physical plane of Earth, right? 4D includes time, 
Obviously, we um, and we talked about a little bit about that over the week. We have invented time as human beings um, to be able to measure things because that's what our prefrontal cortex does. Okay, it needs to measure things. It needs to know what's going on. All right. So in step into five D, that is literally just awareness and collapsing timelines. All right. So that's all. So when you hear that, don't get scared by that. It's not freaky deaky, woo woo, spiritual speak. That's what people are trying to say. Okay. Literally, it's just an awareness. It's an awareness shift in us. So it's nothing you have to do. It's nothing you have to study. You don't have to ask, you know, uh, anybody, spiritual guru. It's, it's a natural awareness shift in your own self. Okay. When you, um, when you, figure out how something feels okay remember thoughts and feelings and emotions right energy and motion all right so awareness of your own physical body aha so we live in a 3d plane one of the best anger management techniques and exactly how mindfulness and awareness works is and awareness of our own physical body, okay? So we have ways that we determine things to be real, okay? Whether or not that's true, it doesn't matter because this is where we're living right now, right? So if we can see it, if we can hear it, if we can smell it, if we can taste it, if we can touch it, okay? That's what we determine as real in this plane of anxiety or, or this plane of existence <laughs> or plane of anxiety. I guess you can live in whatever plane you want. Some people do live in a plane of anxiety uh, and that's why we're trying to get to some awareness. So, um, and that's the mindfulness that we're talking about. Okay. So once again, we throw around words and sometimes people don't know exactly what we're talking about. It sounds a little woo woo. It's like spiritual, you know. Um, and sometimes that scares people off from a natural shift, okay, of raising their own vibration. That's all we're talking about, okay? So the beautiful thing is awareness of your own physical body and how things are affecting you. That is how we are able to react to what's going on around us. Okay, it's simple as that, okay? So realize this, and here's a, let me just break it down right now. Hello, Looks like uh, Browen's joining us. Let me just check here. A room full of teens. Adele also works with teens. I do the same. Uh, hate on each other all day. Talk about kindness doesn't help. It will help, Adele. So here, I'll we'll, we'll talk about some strategies that we can do. I also work with rooms full of teens. We do groups. We have anger management group here. We have ASAP group, which are kids that are so hurt and reaching out that they've become addicted as a youth to some some outside thing that they think is going to help them okay might be alcohol might be drugs um i work with with kids in all of those situations i also work with adults in those situations and we absolutely can still raise the vibration okay um so first of all it starts with your own attitude okay know that you can and it's sending love and compassion always all right um and we'll talk about that we're going to go through some some actual strategies here in a little bit so thanks for bringing that up i appreciate that um we'll definitely get back on that yes jason's exactly right You're, we're planting those seeds and even even with our own kids um or, or our family members sometimes they're the hardest to receive this stuff and it's okay Realize that everyone's not at the same awareness level and it's okay. All right. So we plant the seeds. We let them know what we believe. And that actually will change a lot. There's been a lot of studies that talk about um, if you can introduce an idea and someone knows you truly believe in it with passion. Doesn't matter what it is. That's how people sell stuff. You know what I mean? That's how evangelists work uh, for churches. It's about the belief and expressing that passion, okay? That will change the vibration. Absolutely, it will. So, and we'll talk some more about that. Um, so, awareness of your own physical body, once again, um, how 
how is that how do we perceive that like how does that help us so let's let's just talk a little bit about the difference between anxiety and stress okay um like i said i do i do work in the mental health field and we deal with that a lot and it's actually very simple to figure out okay anxiety if you are anxious it is about always not being in the present and instead being worried about something some future event in the future okay anxiety is about the future and you can fix that by bringing yourself back to the present in one great way we did a body check remember the body check um that we did uh, i think sheb ran us through the body check that was beautiful and that's a great way to get right back to the present time period okay um if you are living stressful, 99% of the time stress is caused by living in the past. Okay, so it's either comparison to something you had before, um, memories of someone or something, and trying to relate that to a present moment. Realizing, once again, 5D collapse timelines, there is only the present moment, okay? Okay. Um, it's, it's hard. I know we've, you know what I mean? We're all different ages, but we've lived all of our lives thinking about time as a linear, um, event. Okay. We're born and it goes all the way up until, you know, until we cross over. Um, it's not exactly how it is. It works for here because once again, our prefrontal cortex is able to measure things. Okay. So we deal with it and we know once we're on this 5D, um, we can look down on it and say, that's okay. That's great. It works for what we're doing. But also being in that awareness, that means if you're living in the future, which doesn't exist, then you can bring yourself back to the present moment and it, and it will ease that. Okay. You can, you can ease your own anxiety by bringing yourself back to the present. Okay. And we are going to go through some techniques. You can also relieve your own stress by taking yourself out of the past and once again back in the present moment. How do we do that? What can we see? What can we hear? What can we smell? What can we taste? What can we touch? Okay? So, once again, in real world scenarios, if I go into a school and a kid's having a meltdown and He's freaking out because there's a math test coming up and nobody is going to help him and he's going to fail and, and then he's going to go home and his dad's going to be mad and then all kind of stuff. He's living in what? A future that he's creating by his own thoughts. Thoughts, feelings, emotions. Okay? We create that. Life is our mirror and when we live out into the future like that, we create it, okay? So my job um, as an anger management specialist who specializes and uses mindfulness every single day, I come in there and I bring them back to the present moment, okay? And that's, that's what we've got to do for ourselves, okay? It's called self-regulating. So when we get these skills, we're able to do it for ourselves. Unfortunately, a lot of kids can't and my job is to teach them the skills that they can and I've got a whole team of people here that uh, that work with me in doing that um, and there's people all around the world that work in this same field and the more people we get realizing about awareness um, the better it's going to be we raise the vibration people can self-regulate people can bring themselves back to the moment people can also help other people bring themselves back and be like hey you're freaking out about something that happened three days ago look where you're at right now you know look where you're at that's when we bring in the thoughts like the appreciation and the gratitude right we've been talking about that all week uh, last week as well appreciation and gratitude once again if we look at the scale okay appreciation gratitude love joy all the top 500 and above 
Okay, if we can introduce even one piece of that, that raises over the overall, that's going to raise the overall vibration of that person. Okay, so realize that life is a scale. You guys remember when you went to school? Okay, if a teacher graded on a scale, you'd have a low point, you'd have a high point, right? Okay, anything you introduce in between that is going to raise or lower the overall mean. Okay. Reach for another high, high thought, whatever works, okay? And I actually go through with each of the kids I work with. I have 38 kids that I check in on a, on a weekly basis with at least. Um, I go through a whole process, and we have what's called an anger control strategy in place, okay? Anger controls, control strategy, and it includes red flags and triggers, okay, in the determination of that. So what's a red flag? Um, anybody know what a red flag is? You want to type it in there? I hope this is helpful, by the way. I was really led to uh, do this, like I said, based on some stuff that happened today and comments that you guys have been doing over the week about how we can um, implement mindfulness and awareness. So what's a red flag? Anybody tell me? And what's the difference between a red flag and a trigger? Hmm. Okay. Red flags and triggers are both awesome ways to predict the way we're going to react to something. Okay. Once again, we're running on a paradigm. Okay. We've got beliefs. We've got thoughts and beliefs. We can use that to our advantage. That's the awareness. Okay. That's the mindfulness right there. In action. Mindfulness in action. MIA. All right. So the way we do that, red flag is something that we know will eventually lead to a trigger if we keep continuing down that path. Okay. It's a red flag. In the distance. Like, there's that bully kid. Right. Okay. Now, we know that that's a thought of our own. Okay, and that we're projecting that, but in the moment, it's better to deal with the red flag than to go face to face and be caught up in the emotion, energy emotion, okay, that drags our vibration down, right? So how do we keep it up? Say we're operating at a 300 level, we're walking down, walking down the hall, getting in our locker, whatever it is. Um, for us older, older folks, we may be headed out to the mailbox to check the mail. We look across the street, and there's old crotchety Miss Carruthers, right? So, one thing we can do as aware folks, we can bring love, okay? And remember to stay detached. If we know that Miss Carruthers is going to be a trigger, then, then just the sight of her, Right? We talked about our five senses and how that helps us. The sight of her tells me she's a, that's a red flag. That sight is a red flag. And, and maybe I'll just fix the screen door until Miss Carruthers gets done mowing the front lawn. Right? That's a red flag. A trigger would be Miss Carruthers. So if we walked up on Miss Carruthers unbeknownst or she came out while we were checking the mail. Okay? Which sometimes uh, some, some crouchy old folks may do. Right? It's life, you know. We deal with we deal with it every day. We all have coworkers who come in an ugly mood. You know, they start off the day, they wake up, and they're like, "Oh my God, Monday! What am I gonna do?" <laughs> Facebook is flooded with it. Not on my timeline, it's not, but on some some people's timelines, it is. My timeline is beautiful, but um. So you guys, you guys see where I'm going with that. So a red flag is a way to use our uh, physical senses. To avoid the situation, a trigger is going to be something that we know for sure is going to cause us to react in a certain way based on our beliefs and our paradigms that we run in our subconscious already, okay? Realizing that we can affect that, we can change our beliefs, okay? A belief is just a thought we keep thinking. Abraham Hicks, right? Love that. One of my favorite quotes. A belief is just a thought we keep thinking, can we change our thoughts? We can because we're conscious, right? We're conscious creators. 
So uh, in, in our deliberate creation, we can change our thoughts. Some, uh, for some reason, my uh, comments are frozen, so I apologize. I've, I've seen the same three comments there for <laughs> like 15 minutes. So um, the wonderful thing is Jason's in, in the room, and Jason, uh, I'm sure, is doing a great job of answering some of you guys' questions, so I appreciate that very much. Uh, also, Miss Ellie's in the room, and she is also very conscious and aware. Um, and several of you other guys, Sheb is here. Sheb Jeter's in the room, so she can definitely help. Hi, Sheb. I didn't know you snuck in there. I, it just now rolled up to you. Awesome. So I'm glad Sheb's there, too. So they're going to help me answer the questions there because I'm having trouble. For some reason, it keeps locking up on that scrolling part. So... Um, both Sheb and Jason obviously are awesome at that. Like I said, uh, I was introduced to Ellie. I saw Ellie popped in earlier. Um, she is an intuitive reader and she is very good with this stuff as well. We have a lot of projects that we are working on together. Um, so she, she may pop in with some answers and she's always really good with her, uh, comments as well. Okay. So we're going to move on just a little bit. So awareness of your own physical body and how that can help you. Okay. We talked about red flags and triggers. Avoiding conflict where we can. Okay. How we can actually raise vibration when we can't. How do we do that? Once again, it's the projecting of our own love. It's the non-attachment. It's not taking things personal. It's realizing that life is a mirror. Okay. Just, I'm telling you, just the realization that life is a mirror and in some way you're contributing to what your experience is, is empowering. So don't look at it as a negative thing. That's empowering because if you're, if you're contributing to that, if you're drawing that in through the law of attraction, that means you can change it. Okay? You're not a victim. Victim mentality is what keeps you stuck. Okay? So you're a creator. You're a conscious creator. So we're using... We're using our consciousness to create a better life. All right, so we're going to move on. And the last thing I had identified here um, is identifying your own issues and expressing that. Okay, so this is kind of the, the epitome of the 5D experience. Okay, if you look at 3D as the here and now, 4D, like I said, is time. 5D, if you look at that as like we're looking down on ourselves and we can see us, okay? Obviously, our higher self is in the physical body as an avatar, if you know what I mean by that, okay? So it's like the matrix. We're plugged in, okay? Um, there's, there's all kind of analogies I could use with that, but yeah, I think you get it. So, so just look from a higher perspective, 5D perspective, if we can identify our own issues and how we contribute to that and we can express that and not bottle it up, communication, we can let it go. We can release it. You know what I mean? We don't have to keep repeating those same things. We don't have to keep thinking the same thoughts that turn into our life. We wake up and it's 50 years later and we've been doing the same thing for 40 of it. Ever since seven, when we were programmed, we were on our own and we've reverted right back to those schoolyard bullies, right back to the awareness that, guess what, there was, there's a little bit of friction because when your brother was born, you didn't get as much attention from your parents. And that's personal experience, I'm telling you. I had a regression with Marissa Peer and I found that out. It's real. But we can let it go. That's the beautiful thing, okay? So, we let it go. We identify our issue. We express it on Facebook Live for everybody to see. In a supportive environment like this. Okay? Old limiting beliefs. Right? I just said old limiting beliefs. That's crazy. Okay? They're not true. Their beliefs, thoughts are just things we keep thinking. Beliefs are just the thoughts we keep thinking, right? We can change those thoughts. They don't, they don't have to run our life, okay? And that's what awareness and mindfulness can do for us. So I have it right there. I have a reminder. Thoughts become things. 
But how, do, how does that happen? Thoughts mixed with feelings, okay? So if we think the thought long enough that we have a, a, thought, a feeling about it, we feel some sort of way, somebody might say on Facebook, okay? That's how we can transmit that. If we get it down into our heart center, it mixes with, with the magnetism of the heart on that uh, magnetic field, and it empowers it to become an emotion. It works just for negative the same way it works for positive. So be careful, okay? That's the conscious part, okay? That's, that's exactly what we're talking about today. So once again, uh, appreciate you guys here. We are just talking a little bit about anger management um, based on the things that uh, I was dealing with this morning and, and wanted to kind of come back over the course of the week. We've been talking a lot about awareness and mindfulness. Um, and there were a lot of questions in the comments about how do we apply that in real life situations. And even Adele here has has um, expressed some concern because she works with teens I think Jason addressed that really, really well. We're, we're planting seeds, okay? As far as showing compassion and love, we're planting those seeds. We're always coming in a positive mood. We're teaching them these skills so maybe they can raise just a little bit more, okay? Remember, it's the next best feeling thought. We're not reaching for love when we're all the way down in anger. You know, like Abraham, Abraham Hicks or Esther would say, you can't get there from there, okay? You can't. You're setting yourself up for a false expectation if you think so. Don't do that. Get to satisfaction. Okay? Um, at the last Abraham I was at um, in Chicago, she was talking a lot about satisfaction. Satisfaction is right in the middle of the emotional scale. And the purpose, um, well, not the purpose, but the point is if you can reach to get to there, if that's your goal, if you can just get to being satisfied, and the idea that you do create your own reality and that maybe you can start implementing these own things, your these own things, uh, these things for yourself, that's beautiful. Okay? That's perfect. That's how you take control of your life. All right. But if you overshoot and you're 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 like, I'm going to be enlightened today. I'm going to meditate for 24 hours and I'm going to wake up enlightened. It's not going to happen. It doesn't happen like that. It's a shift, okay? You've got to shift up the emotional scale. All right. Um, yes, energy, emotion, emotion. All right, perfect. So let's talk just a little bit about some ways to do that. You guys have gotten a lot of tools over the past week. Um, a lot of beautiful meditations. Colette has started a lot of us on a path for tapping, which I am excited about. I... Uh, I am starting right along with you, like it's something that uh, I am definitely interested in learning about. Um, I am a two-time-a-day meditator. I do guided meditation in the morning, every morning, um, and then I do a, kind of throughout the day, I'll do different things, and we'll talk about those. These are kind of the same skills I teach kids, and then at night, I'll, I do an actual 20 to 30-minute meditation freeform, kind of a silent meditation, if you were. Um, lots of times I use a beat, uh, like something that Jason, Jason, uh, would program for us. Um, some beautiful things like that to literally calm your mind and, uh, fall asleep to get yourself raised back to a mid level, let your cork float, if you will, get back to that midpoint so that as you're falling asleep, you can get your downloads, you can do all that and you can wake up at an even keel and use appreciation to start your day off great, like we've been talking about. Um, once again, appreciation and gratitude by far is my personal um, best way to raise vibration, but that's because I keep myself around 450, okay? <laughs> like I don't let myself get low very often, and when I do, I address it, okay? I don't, I don't bottle it up, I address it, you know? Uh, Allie, here's a lot of that. Ellie, here's a lot of that. Uh, the consciousness creators, we're really good at that, at sharing, sharing our emotions between each other. Like, it's, it's a really a beautiful thing um, in a safe space. And this, this whole consciousness creator summit, there's 1,500 people right here. It's a safe space. Um, 
you know what I mean? Feel free to share stuff out on the lives. You know, friend, like each other, get in other groups that you guys are in. There's lots of great groups on Facebook, okay? And let me just address social media real quick. Some people think social media is horrible. I happen to think social media is the best thing that ever happens to spreading consciousness, okay? Um, you may not know this, but... You may not know this, but Facebook and Instagram, which is the same company, actually, um, their, actual, their platform is actually based on the law of attraction, okay, and, and knowingly, consciously based on the idea of the law of attraction. So that's why you only see the things that you like. Like attracts like, okay? Love attracts love. So if you heart something, I guarantee you see it more often. If you like something, I guarantee you see it more often. Okay, if you're following somebody, I guarantee you there's more likely that they're about to follow you because they're going to get suggested. Okay, that's the law of attraction. And I'm telling you right now, my timeline is nothing but positivity from the minute I log in. I don't see one ugly thing, not one. And if, if it is, it's because you're scared to let go of a family or a friend or you enjoy the drama. So if that's the case realize it in yourself, you know what I mean? And maybe address that. If that's dragging you down in the morning because you like to see the baby mama drama or whatever goes on on Facebook that I hear so much about but don't see, then maybe you need to address that in yourself, okay? That's, a, that's something you can address yourself. All right, just a couple of other things here. Um, I don't want to run too long on this, but I do want to let you have a couple small techniques that I do that I use a lot with kids and people in general in crisis okay someone who may not be able to stop what they're doing right in the middle and meditate or do yoga or do tai chi right i've been i've been learning tai chi which is a beautiful thing that incorporates mindfulness and movement all in one in spirituality and eastern philosophy so I've been, I've been working on that with my friend Eric Ho. Um, so there's just so much stuff out there that you guys can do. But let me, sp let me share a couple of little things that you can do to self-regulate when you're not in the mind to do some of these other things and you don't have the process maybe set up yet. Okay, I do highly, highly suggest you start meditating. Okay, if tapping works for you, tap okay if like i said if yoga works do yoga do what works for you but try things see what works okay but let me let me give you some basic level things that you can do in the moment either with yourself or with someone else okay uh too much political news ah, politics politics is a big downfall oh my gosh and he, here's the funny thing 5d perspective doesn't matter which party might be in control of something. I'm not a victim. I don't know about you guys. I'm not a victim. So it really doesn't matter. However, people can get all caught up in it. And if it's somebody we love, that's something that sometimes we're willing to put up with because of that. Okay? That's one of the things that we do to live on this, on this 3D planet with other people. Okay? And, and we have to. It's all about connections. Okay? Um, but for one, you can raise your level of connectedness, okay? So if you've, got, if you've got a circle of 10 folks, don't be the smartest or the most spiritual one in your group. Have, have somebody to raise that mean, okay? Remember we were talking about grading on a scale? Who, who's, who's your mentor in that group, okay? Always make sure there's somebody that you're, you're trying to implement their ideas. You've got somebody to bounce your higher thinking off of, okay? You don't you don't want to be the guru of your own group. Do not. I'm telling you right now there you, there's no there's no quicker way to be stagnant than to be the guru of your own group. All right. So let me just give you quickly here a couple techniques. Um and some of these uh are involved in their kind of pieces of uh, meditation or mindfulness practices, but it's things that you can do in uh, in the moment, uh, don't require a lot of, uh, you know, don't require anything really. 
that you can you can do anywhere. And I teach this to kids because they can do it in the classroom and they can do it where no one else knows it's going on. And that way they don't feel embarrassed when they're doing it, um, but they get some instant feeling of being able to float up maybe maybe one or two notches on, on the emotional scale, right? So we want to get our feelings to adjust themselves, which it will. We naturally float when we just let go of, remember, the past and the future and stay in the present, in this moment, we're going to float. We will. It's the way it works. It's the way our bodies are made to work. So one big thing I do and the first thing I do with every single person I work with is teach them breathing skills, breathing techniques, okay? Um, obviously, it, when we're doing meditation, it's a lot to do with the breath. The breath centers us. Every single meditation that we've gone through over the past week, um, breathing has been a big part of that. Okay, it's something that our body naturally does and it's something that we're happy that the subconscious controls for us, right? We don't want to have to consciously think that I should be breathing now or I shouldn't be, right? So, so we're going to let that, we're going to let that center us, but we can also use that to our advantage in case uh, things are going awry around us. You know what I mean? There's triggers everywhere. We know we're triggered inside our own cells. We can literally do deep breathing techniques. Um, and one that I like, there, there's several, and we'll just go through a couple. So basically, let's just talk about breathing in general, okay? When you breathe, you should be inhaling where? Anybody going to say? How should, how should we be inhaling and exhaling? Physical apparatus of ourselves. Who can tell me? Anybody tell me? Yeah, I'll wait a couple of seconds here. So the question is, breathing, how should we breathe? Nose, okay, in or out? I'll tell you right now, we don't do both. Out your mouth, okay, in your nose, out your mouth. Perfect, diaphragm, okay, now we're getting some stuff here. Here we go, diaphragm. We are our own trigger. Absolutely, Jenny. We are our own trigger, and that's the whole point. If the world is a mirror, we really are our own trigger. Therefore, we can be what? Our own solution also. Okay? So, if, if you, I don't know if you've seen the meme, but if you're a follower of my personal thing all the time, instead of medication, I'm always putting things about meditation. So, I have a lot of memes where it <laughs> kind of uses that word uh, interchangeably. I am a big fan of mindfulness and uh, awareness as opposed to always reaching for some kind of uh, other way, some outside influence. You know, if we know that the issues are inside of us, then we can fix those. Okay, our higher, our high, our higher being will help us do that. So, breathing techniques. <clears throat> Absolutely correct, you guys. Um, a lot of you guys know already. So, you're going to breathe in through your nose, which there is a filter, right? We are going to breathe out through our mouth. Okay, and we should be doing this on the daily. doesn't happen. Most people talk so much that they're breathing in and out of their mouth all the time. And their nose might uh, not even be in the process there. Um, and I did see some people talk about the diaphragm. That is correct also. Deep breathing involves getting the diaphragm involved in it, okay? So we want to fill up the entire breath. But there is also something to be said for opening up the airways, okay, with what they consider shallow breathing, all right? So let me just show you a technique, okay? This is a panic attack technique that we use for kids and adults, anybody in crisis, all right? It's a deep breathing technique, and it's something you can do right away anytime that you have the awareness, you see the red flag, or you feel the trigger, okay? And it's literally close your eyes. So everybody do this with me. Close your eyes. You're going to breathe in through your nose, and you're going to breathe it into your chest, and you're going you're gonna to breathe as hard and as much as you can until you don't physically have space in your chest anymore. 
So this one we're not letting go to the diaphragm. Try to keep it in your chest, and then you're going to exhale out through the mouth. Okay, we're going to do that three times. Okay, in, chest, out through the mouth. And make a sound. If you're, if you're not pushing hard enough that there's a sound coming out of your mouth for this exercise, you're not doing it right. So we're going to do it two more times. In, chest, out. And last, in, Okay, that opens up your chest. That gets breathing. That's already going to reduce a little bit of your heart rate. It's going to increase the circulation, okay? This is the same reason why exercise helps stress and anxiety, okay? Vigorous exercise is one of the top ways that we can, on a daily basis, reduce our own stress and anxiety levels. Same, same effects right there. So we want to follow that up with the diaphragm breathing. So this time when we do it, you can put your hands on, kind of on your tummy and you want to make sure that your hand is raising this time. So you want to, you want to purposely put the awareness in your chest and you're going to push the air down into your diaphragm, which is in your lower stomach basically. Okay, so, well it's... It's, it's going to show in your stomach. So that's how you're going to know. So we're going to do the same thing in through the nose. We're going to breathe into our diaphragm. We're going to go out and we're going to do that three times. And once again, we're going to make a noise on the way out. Ready? Here we go. In three. Okay, if you, did, if you did that right, you should right now already be feeling different. If you're feeling different already, whether good or bad, like it may be, you may not be used to breathing like this and your heart may, may be accelerated at this point. But guess what? You're out of past, future. You're in the present right this second, okay? All right, so get, yeah, please give me some hearts if you're feeling a little bit different already. We've, we've done literally two minutes of breathing only. Something that we do autonomously, okay? Now, there are different, different tricks and techniques you can do. Um, I know Allie likes to do like a progressive breathing when she gets into her meditation. There is a box technique. Um, and I think I'll just show you just a couple of these real quick. Um, and basically, once again, this is just ways to gets you to focus on your breath again, on the present moment, okay? <clears throat> Somebody feels higher, right? Okay, your vibration's already raised. You know what you did? You released stress, you released anxiety, your cork is floating, okay? You're moving up the emotional scale. So let's just talk a little bit about box breathing, okay? If you recognize your breathing is a cycle that goes in, there's a certain level of hold, it goes out, and then there's a certain level of hold while you're getting ready to um, inhale again. Okay, so what we can do with that, we can time that. So we can, and once again, this is bringing us back to the present moment, because now not only are we focusing on breathing, we're focusing on counting in the moment, okay? Thanks, Jason. All right. So in the moment, we're going to do box breathing. So what we're going to do, we're going to inhale for four seconds. Okay? In a perfect square, we would hold it for four seconds. We would exhale for four seconds, and then we would not breathe in for four seconds. So if you're comfortable with that, we will try that. If you're not, and you want to make this an oblique, where you breathe in for four, hold it for only three, exhale for four, and hold it for three, that's fine too. I'm going to do four and four. I'm going to do a perfect square. So once again, we're going to do that. I'm going to close. I'm going to get focused and present. And I'm going to think visually about a square. Okay. Once again, I'm breathing in through my nose. And I'm going to be breathing out through my mouth. Okay. But I'm, th I'm thinking about a square. And I'm going to remember to hold at the top and hold at the bottom. 
So it goes a little something like this. And the last one. Okay. Breathing technique. So that's the box technique, okay? Steve, thanks for joining in, Steve. All right, we're going to wrap it up here shortly. I just want to do a couple of those techniques. Like I said, you can also do progressive, which means you can do the same uh, thing that we just did but we can do increasing sides. So if we inhale for three, we can hold for four, we can exhale for five. Okay, let's try to do that like in a triangle. Picture a triangle, inhale for three, we're gonna hold, okay, for four, and then we're gonna exhale for five. That's the long side, okay? And here we go. And last time. And there are several techniques that you can do along with that. Um, with kids who are in severe panic attacks, um, I have them do that and keep expanding until they can't keep adding numbers. It becomes a fun game for them. They try to beat their old score. Um, they get totally into the 3D present reality, which in that case is beautiful, and it's what I need them to do, okay? Same thing for you guys. Um, you can definitely do that yourselves. Um, that's called self-regulation, and that is just a little bit. There's all kind of different things that we can do just in breathing. Um, we can also talk about visualization. We do a lot of that. I also wanted to uh, put your awareness into the fact that you can do things with eyesight and staring that completely do the same thing. We can actually do it with all of our senses because once again, we're bringing ourselves back to the present moment using our physical senses, okay? So we'll save that for some other lives. I hope this was helpful. Once again, your personal awareness affects the planet, okay? You raise your vibration, and I promise you're raising the vibration of everyone else around you, okay? And if nothing else, remember this. Don't be your own, the, the guru of your group, okay? Don't be the guru of your own group, okay? Have, have somebody that can help you someone, somewhere that you're reaching for, whether it's business, whether it's spirituality, whether it's personal relationships, anything you're into, Make sure you've got a mentor in your 10 closest friends that you can reach out to. And if you don't have one in your physical space, Facebook is great for that, okay? Podcasts. Um, the world is so small right now thanks to social media and the internet. Make sure you're tuning into the right things and helping your own vibration. Like I said, you can help the planet. So... With that being said, I do want to just touch base one time. I did go into the recording studio last night and finished up some things. I want to give you guys a sneak peek. It is by no means completely finished, but I want to give you a sneak peek of the mantra that we did last week on my live um, and kind of how that's formatting into a song for my record label that will be released on iTunes. Um, but for the people in this group, I am going to give you, and I'll tell you more about it next week because I'm working right now with my website designer, I am going to give you access to this uh, this little snippet part at least uh, to download for free um, to do your mantra along with. 
So once again, the mantra was, I'm grateful for the knowledge of the God within. Divine abundance flows to me easily. You guys remember that? Okay, so this is, this is where we're at right now. We took a little jazzy take on it. And uh, if you want to do it along with it, I would love that. I'm going to. So let's just see if we can hear it. Can you guys hear that at all? Divine abundance, it flows to me easily. I'm grateful for the knowledge of the God within. Divine abundance, it flows to me easily. Oh, sorry, I skipped it. I'm grateful for the knowledge of the God within. Divine abundance, it flows to me easily. I'm grateful for the knowledge of the God within. Sorry, I'm getting dancing. Divine abundance, it flows to me easily. Let's get it out. So the idea is we'll do the mantra over all this part. Except I keep making it skip because I'm holding it, so. I'm grateful for the knowledge of the God within. Divine abundance is flow. Well, all right. I can't do it with the beat because I'm skipping. So anyway, you get the idea. <laughs> I'm going to, uh, I'll let you guys know more about that this week coming up. Um, it's a little jazzy thing, so hopefully it's something you guys can use. And uh, you'll hear the finished version, and I am going to give you guys a free download of that. Everybody in the Consciousness Creators, if you like that and you appreciate it. So, all right. That's it for today. Hey. Just a little dance it out. Everybody dance it out. Let's get it now. Hey. Grateful for the knowledge of the God within divine abundance. It flows to me easily. Consciousness Creator Summit. Once again, my name is Tony Doyle, and we are out. Y'all have a great rest of your evening, morning, day, whatever it is, and the rest of your week. Don't forget, Miss Tapping Girl herself, Colette Luisi, Leosi, <laughs> will be on tomorrow, um, 8.30 a.m. Eastern, as always, right here in the Consciousness Creators. Thank you very much. Love you guys, and we'll see you soon. Peace.